right guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about what I take to the woods when I'm going logging. I'm not gonna talk about heavy equipment in this video, but I'm gonna talk about what it takes to be a production timber cutter and uh, what I think makes sense when you're going to the woods, uh, driving a pickup truck, and uh, you know what, what I think it takes to run smoothly and professionally when you're going to the woods. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna talk about is a pickup truck. I used to drive F-350s and uh, I'd have a flatbed on the back with toolboxes down the side, both sides. And that would be, uh, you know, to hold chainsaws, bars, wrenches, big, big wrenches, grinders, all the tools you need to log. Um, I'm a hardwood timber faller. I cut veneer trees as a whole, but I started out like everybody else. I cut whatever I could trying to make a living. I cut cottonwood, I cut, soft maple i cut i cut so much junk it's unbelievable um but i didn't make any money doing it so now i just cut the good, the better stuff the veneer veneer and quarter saw logs white oak and walnut that's where the money's at if you've got a fancy tree of any species then i'll cut that too but uh anyways the point is we're talking about this truck i got a family i got a daughter she's in uh she's just getting ready to go into the middle school i got a wife i spend a lot of time with my family this truck costs a lot of money Okay, um, I don't see the purpose in having a hundred thousand dollar truck sitting around and another hundred thousand dollar truck sitting in the garage. So I drive this truck. It is not outfitted for logging at all, other than it's an F two fifty, and it has somewhat of a towing capacity. Now, back in the day when I was a serious timber cutter and I didn't, you know, I hadn't perfected my craft to the point at what I, I'm at now. I uh, I ran F three fifties and uh, I had all my tools on me. But the whole back half of the truck was always covered in oil. And I was a worker. I wasn't working four days a week, six hours a day. I was working six, seven days a week, eight to 12 hours a day. And driving. I didn't have time to clean the truck every day. I didn't have time to keep it nice. And you know what? I still don't have time for that stuff. I, you know, I go through a car wash about three times a week. Um, you know, one of these $10, you know, pay ahead of time deals. Um, but, but anyways, I got an F-250. It's basically bone stock. And uh, I might put some cooler tires on it or something, but it'll just be for looks. This thing runs great the way it is now. All right, we talked truck. Now we're gonna talk tools. What do I bring to the woods? If, I, if my equipment breaks down and it's anything even remotely serious, I have it hauled back to my shop and I work on it there. I don't like working on equipment in the woods. I've changed transmissions and, and knee deep ruts and timber jacks back in the day. I've done a lot of stuff that sucked. I'm not looking to do it anymore. So. I don't bring a bunch of heavy duty tools. I don't have three quarter inch drive stuff. You know, not unless I know I need it, then I might throw a, a box together and bring it with me. I've got this old school, I think it's a 1973 toolbox I bought off Marketplace a while back. And, and what do I have in it? I've got the things you need to cut timber. Well, that's that's not. Well, look at this. This is, this is repair stuff for your climbing spikes, bandages, a blood clot thing, lumber marking crayons, Log rulers, cheat sticks, whatever you want to call them. Saw wrenches, nothing in there. Um, I got one crescent. It's pretty empty, to be honest. I mean, there's there's more stuff we need. Look at that. We got files, okay? We got round files, 732nd. We run 3 h 50 gauge chain. Got earplugs. Pretty nice to have sometimes. Nothing. Gloves. I wear gloves. I've had a pretty serious hand injury in the past. I like to wear gloves. Those are the gloves of, of my choice gloves big long tape measure we use this for marking property lines when you buy a piece of timber good jumper cables if you're in the logging industry and you don't have good jumper cables you're up you need to have good jumper cables in the winter time in the midwest in the north you need to have good jumper cables it, it, it's an absolute must 100 percent of the time good jumper cables i got them in every vehicle every trailer Every, everywhere I go, there's good jumper cables. Oil, you know what that is. Change the tire on the trailer. And I don't like dicking around. I got a jack, I got toe straps, and I got funnel in case I got to add some engine. Right here. Now that's a good tool. That's a cant hook. Hickory handle, made in 1986. There were two of them left at the saw shop that I used to buy from years ago. I bought them both. Uh, just the handles. And that's actually like a TSC brand uh, PVN. The black piece there is a TSC brand PVN. And the hook with the point on it, I actually bought that at an antique store. Or I'm sorry, an antique show, like a, uh, a steam-powered show. I bought that there. 
And that, uh, this scant hook has, has literally rolled millions of dollars worth of veneer logs. We got two axes. I don't need 15 axes when I'm going to the woods. I need one. And I bring an extra one in case I lose one. Uh, my dad buys the handle or the axe heads off off of um, off the internet. I think on eBay or something. And he puts the handles on them. He fits them. He maintenances them. He just uh, he just worked on this one for me and put these metal wedges in it. Actually, I did it, but it was at his direction. So uh, those metal wedges that are driven into this, I we just put those in uh, recently. Okay, that's a, just a four foot ruler cheat stick i call it uh it's for marking logs you know marking off veneer okay this is saw chains 28 inch 92 link that's what i run um i got this vice picked it up somewhere i don't know where i got it but i repainted it and put it in here it holds a chainsaw very well so i can put my saw in that and file it in the morning before i go into the woods whatever right here four gallons of bar oil four gallons of, of pre-mixed gas Usually I tie them together with a rope like that. You can see one of them's not, but I tie them together with a rope like that. It's easy to carry in the woods with me in the morning. I'm not cutting on a mountainside like the guys out west. I don't need my uh, I don't need my gas and oil hanging off my belt. I prefer to run light. I want to wear a pair of jeans. I want to wear a t-shirt. In the winter, I'll throw a couple extra layers on top. Um, maybe a set of Carhartt overalls. They take the jeans off, wear the Carhartt overalls. I like to run light. That's a trash can. It's empty, but that's for putting trash in it. This is one's for hyd hydraulic oil, one's for gear oil. I don't like to put that in here if I don't have to, um, but that's what it's for. Saw gas can, that's where I put my, my pre-mix in there. I got a 30 gallon fuel tank. When you cut trees the way we cut, we run 648D John Deere's, um, and they'll be in the videos eventually, but those, uh, those tractors, honestly, they burn about 15 gallons a day doing what we do. We're not a super high production outfit. Uh, so this is 30 gallons. I can fill up a skid steer, whatever we're going to do that day and fill up the skidder. And that's going to cover anything we're going to do that day. Um, so that's, you know, there's fuel. And then inside here, this actually opens up and that's uh, kind of a tight fit. I'm going to set the phone down for a second, guys. All right. Okay. So you can see that actually opens up and in here, I keep my spray paint for marking logs. Uh, I get some off in there for mosquitoes. Got extra uh, Rotella for the heavy equipment. And that right there is is like a thing you put ketchup in when you're grilling. I use that. If you run a if you run a skitter out of fuel, you can prime your fuel lines using that. It's a really good tool. I came up with that about 15 years ago when uh, some goofball that worked for me told me the tractor was full and obviously it wasn't. So that's how I prime the, the diesel lines. Okay. Chainsaws. What do you need when you go logging? Well, I believe, for me, I run a 28-inch bar on a Husqvarna 395, or now I got this 592. You guys have seen it in the videos. Um, but I like three saws. There's a potential. You're going to get up in the morning, drive somewhere several hours, and smash a saw. Then you go grab another saw. Son of a bitch won't start. So, you know, that's extreme circumstances, but I want I want three saws always with me. I'll bring this climbing saw in case I got to go up and, and do something. I'm not a big time climber. Um, I can climb a tree. I've got climbing gear up here. You can see it doesn't have a ton of use on it. I'm not doing tree removals or anything like that. Um, I just climb trees to set chokers if I got to pull a tree over. Or I climb trees for, uh, you know, maybe to knock a limb out. Or I might top a walnut tree. But if it's a huge deal, I get somebody else to do it. I'm not. I am not a real climber. So those three saws up front, they've got 28 inch bars on them. This saw's got a 36 inch bar. I almost never get this thing out. I start it more uh, just to keep it running, you know, once a year or whatever, than I, than, than I do using it in the woods. I might cut five trees a, a year down with this. It's not necessary to have that long bar for what I'm doing. Okay, I wear these boots. These are uh, called Bear Claws by Rocky. I like them. I wear a thousand grams in the winter. I wear 200 in the summer because that's what they make. I think they're comfortable. I think they have good grips on them. This pair of boots is like five years old. I'm still wearing it. I've got four or five pairs of them. I don't know how many I got. I got a bunch. Um, but I love these boots. I'd recommend them to anyone. I'm not getting paid to say it. I just really like these boots. Um, and I would just wear a cheap black helmet. I don't like orange. I think it's kind of gaudy. Um, I just wear a cheap black helmet. That's what I wear. 
and uh you know it's head protection i've been hit a few times i've never had a serious uh i've never been hit seriously in the woods a couple near misses but i do believe a guy should wear hearing protection eye protection and a helmet every day when they're working got the american flag right there proud to be an american and uh i love this toolbox man this thing is this is an old school craftsman and uh i'm really a big fan of that thing so that's most of the stuff i bring i'm sure there's one or two things that aren't in here that i'm forgetting but uh with that being said, I want to go on to something else. I always like to address comments, especially negative comments. So, and if you guys come and say, oh, this guy's running brand new saws and he's just, uh, these guys, when they say that they're insinuating, I don't know what I'm doing or, or I just started yesterday or something. So here's some old 395s. You know, you could get in here, you can look like, you know, this one's got a custom muffler that we built. Um, look here, we've, it's got no uh, decompression. All four of these saws right here, have had the cylinder taken off of them and um and you know we squish the cylinder take off 16 17 thousandths whatever it requires uh to give it a little extra compression and uh up and down the souped up saw uh road this one with this uh with this funny muffler on the front has a big bore in it um it's got torque but it runs slow it's not it's not something i think is awesome um years ago i had a injury and it you know it was a it was a pretty rough one and it took me some time to recover so it was about five years ago when these 572s first came out so i bought this thing you can see i actually drug a log over it and broke the frame on it um but it still runs it runs good the only thing i've done to this saw aside from uh what the hell did we do to it we um we changed the fuel line in it because it dry rotted and uh something happened that we had to we had to replace something but it was like a five dollar part this saw is awesome man i've cut a lot of trees with that thing it don't it won't pull a 28 inch bar the way i need it to pull to do what i do um but it but it's awesome you know if you're cutting little walnut trees or something or you're not in a hurry and you're just going to take your time this is uh it's an awesome little saw here's a 372 um i'll be honest with you i never run it it's an awesome saw it was uh bought off ebay we rebuilt it with all american parts um but it's it's just you know it's just not really the saw that i need i you know i might i'm gonna put a bar on it and cut it cut with it once in a while but it's it's basically nothing. Now this, this is what I call saw number three. Back in the day, I used to number all my saws and I had like, I don't know, a 12 saw rotation or something going on back then. And uh, this was saw number three. Saw number three, you can see it doesn't have a decompression. Um, my dad built this saw for me. He's, it's got a, it's got a big squish on it. I don't know what else he did to it. He might've lightened the piston. I don't think he did. But this is the meanest 395 I've ever run. I've run uh, I've run a lot of 395s. There was a place uh, place down south that we were buying saws that ran off of alcohol. I wasn't buying them, but a guy that worked for me was. Um, and that saw didn't have no, anything compared to saw number three. This was this saw. It still is a gnarly saw, but it's got a lot of hours on it. So I kind of just break it out and I'll run it for one job, and the rest of the time it sits in my garage. Um, but you can see here, we've got 395s and I've got a guy working in the woods right now. That's got several of my saws with him. He's about four hours from here. Um, and what he does is he'll take two or three saws and he'll bring them back to me, you know, every say two weeks and he'll say, Hey, uh, this saw has this problem. This saw has this problem. And he'll go through it and tell me what the problems with the saws are. And then I'll repair them. I'll give him one of these to run. And, uh, you can see these things are beat up, you know, it's missing some grips and whatever, but these saws will fire right up and run. And they'll run like hell. So, uh, you know, I just keep the maintenance done on them for him. So that way he can keep producing logs in the woods because that's the way it works. I don't cut full time anymore. I spend uh, I spend about a day or two a week in the woods cutting. I hate running heavy equipment. I'll run a, I'll skid two trees or something or run the dozer a little bit. But I absolutely despise running heavy equipment. And I try to stay out of it as much as possible. Um so I, I, I've, you know, my cutter slash skitter man, he does most of the skidding. I'll cut a couple days a week as needed. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, living a healthy lifestyle and buying standing timber. Uh, that's what, you know, and then running this business. You know, we buy something like 2,000 trees a year and it's uh, it's mostly white oak and walnut. If we buy other species, it does, it's not included in that 2,000. That 2,000 is our... Uh, is our goal for the year every year of some type of a fancy quarter saw tree or uh or a veneer tree so uh we're pretty good at it i've got good guys working for me i've got you know i've got a few people that help me in the buying process but i would say i'm the main buyer when it really comes down to it um 
It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to learn your log markets and to learn how to market them properly. And uh, to be honest, I'm still not great at relationships as, as, as great as I wish I was. I become frustrated. I become angry with the buyer sometimes. I think it's just kind of a logger thing. It happens. But um, this is what I bring to the woods. And I think, uh, I think if you're going any other way besides this, you might want to consider, you know, making a change because it keeps your truck nice. And, uh, you know, I change my clothes in the trailer before I leave. Uh, at the end of the day, I change in the morning when I get there. I change before I leave. I'm always driving home clean. My truck's never getting full of sawdust and grease and whatever. And, uh, guys, I couldn't, I couldn't recommend a setup like this up enough. Um, and honestly, you can pick a trailer up, up like this pretty cheap. It's not a high dollar unit or anything. And, uh, you know, a couple days you put it together and you're in the woods, you know, and you've got everything you need. And if I need to haul anything with me, you know, I've got a lot of floor space. That's another thing. If I need to haul anything, you know, say I need, you know, I'm not going to haul a skitter tire in here, but you know, if I needed to haul a big, a big toolbox or something, I got room on the floor in here, you know, I can, I can put that in here. So.